Hey there, today I'm going to show you how you can use the Immersive Reader tool in the OneNote app version. All right, let's have a look. Now, you will just have to um, ignore this little uh, image here. This example, this image that I have with this red box around it, that is for the desktop version. But what you're actually seeing on the screen is my iPad. So we're looking here, let's indicate where I am here at view up in the top. We're looking for this immersive reader tool. Now, immersive reader looks different on lots of different versions of OneNote. But in my opinion, which makes me really happy because we have a lot of students who need the use of this assistive, assistive technology on iPads and it's brilliant on an iPad. I think it has everything that Immersive Reader offers as far as I know. So what I have here is just some text. So this text has been typed in. It does need to be typed into the actual page for it to work. I'm just taking a very small passage from a children's novel, a children's book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on this Immersive Reader tool and the entire screen is actually going to change on us, which is totally fine. So let's do that. We're going to wait for it to load. Wonderful. There it is. So I've got my immersive reader tool set up here. I'm going to pull myself over here. So I'm not in the way of the text and you can see that the distractions of all of the little one note features and that have gone. It's literally just some little tools at the top here that we're going to go through and the text so the text start actually starts here where it says don't and you can see that when i tap on that that the word don't comes up and then i can also tap on a little audio so when i do that don't hopefully you can hear that but it said don't out loud now down the bottom you can't quite see it unfortunately i'm gonna have to fix this but um uh, there is a little cog tool and that will pop up this voice speed option and selection of voice. So we can see here that at the moment mine is set to female. So right next to it is a play button. So when I hit that. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by Mo Willems. So if I was to do that again, I'm going to change the settings here. If I go up one and hit play. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by Mo Willems. Now it does, it does go pretty extreme. Like if I go to the fastest there and go don't. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by mobiles. Okay, um, what context you'd use that under, I'm not sure, but um, it's all going to be individual to everyone. I tend to find on the iPad about that one. So one tends to work best. You can slow it right down so we can go back to 0 0.5. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by Mo Willems. You can change the tone of the voice as well. So mic set to female. I can change it to male as well. So if I go back up to here. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by Mo Willems. And I can have a gentleman speak it. Now, from my understanding, because so I'm Australian, I'm in Australia, mine is set for specific types of accents. And they do, they can be changed or of my understanding as well as that they're set to whatever your tenant is set under. Our other options here is we're going to look here at this way where we have the two A's at the top. Okay. And this here will open up our formatting options. So we can change this text size. So as I slide that up, you can see the text keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we can have quite large text if we need. So, I can also tap to increase the spacing. So if you look at the spacings between the words, they spread out and they increase. There's three possible fonts there that I can click and choose between. And then I have my themes here. Now themes, if I drop them down to show you all of them, they are just the background colors. So certain students will read or find it easier to read behind different colored um, backgrounds so they can be applied as well. Our other option here, these are our grammar options. So I've just flicked over here to the middle one. We can break the words up. So if we look at a particular word like driver there, which is in the middle of the screen, if I turn that off, 
it shows it as one word and we drive it up, it breaks it up into its syllables. This text isn't overly complicated. So probably remember there is probably the most complicated word that we have in regards to breaking into multiple syllables, but we can see it's remember three syllables. We can also turn on parts of speech. So this, by turning on the first one, it will highlight all of my nouns red, and I can change that, okay, if I want them to be this color or whatever color I might choose, so be it. Otherwise, you can just leave them as they are, and you kind of get the general idea. I can then highlight the verbs, the adjectives, which um, there's some at the top there, um, if, and our adverbs as well. We can also choose to label them with the little label at the top, but as soon as you, if we focus on like a noun, as soon as I turn the noun off, you can't just have the writing about the top. It needs to be in the color and for it to also get the label at the top of it. Our last option here is I'm just gonna look at this little book here. So our third one on the right. So if I tap on this one, we can turn something called line focus, which means that if I choose to read, I've got it on single line at the moment. So if we start from the top here and hit don't. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by Mo Willems. Hi. I'm the bus driver. So it's only showing the singular line that's being read at a time. If I'm not using the play function to read it out, I can also just, again, I'm in the way there. I'm just going to move. So we've got the up and down arrows and that will move between the text. I can widen that out to have three lines. So that will show three lines at a time. My only big thing here I've uh, kind of noticed as well with this is that there is a five line option, but it doesn't come up on an iPad. Second last one we're gonna look at here is the picture dictionary. So I'm gonna turn that on. And what that means is that when I look through this text and I might just turn off line focus, so we've got the whole thing. So we'll pick a really obvious word. So if I tap on something like pigeon, if I look at that word and I don't know how to pronounce it, I can tap on it. Yes, I can pigeon. hear it. Or I can also see a picture, something like drive. So, you know, I know that's not the word car, but I can try to process of elimination by looking at the, the images to work that out. And they will kind of go through. Some photos are better than others. It really depends. You won't get anything for things like um, A or four, okay? So, and C and driver doesn't have anything either. But what we notice about the software is that it's constantly evolving. So over time, you will notice in particular updates that they've added like a thousand photos where those photos have gone into which words we're not sure, but there definitely is a lot more than there used to be. Our last one here is for translate options. So we have a selection, a rather wide range of selection here of languages that we can go through. So if I was to choose um, German, okay, it's set by word, which means that if I was to press the word listen, it will give me the translation. I can listen to that yeah. and listen to it in English. Listen. Okay, and I can go through any of the particular words here, you know, I don't know how to say little in German. Weile. It would give me that translation. I can translate the whole document. So if I wanted to listen to this story in German, I could tap at the beginning. Hallo. Ich bin der Busfahrer. And vice versa. So if I'm looking at this and I'm trying to translate back to English, I can tap on the word that I'm not sure of. So most is have to, so I can listen to both. Most. Have to. And it will give me that translation. Now at the top here, you'll see that it's got original and then it's got German. So if I tap on original, it flicks back. If I tap on German, it shows me both. Now to leave immersive reader, if we're finished with it, it's just right at the top here in the top left hand corner. I'm just going to tap on close and then we are back to our OneNote app as we remember it. All right, guys, I hope that you get some use out of Immersive Reader and it works as a really powerful learning assistive, assistive tool for you in your teaching. We'll see you again soon. Bye.
If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date, don't forget to follow us. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section. Cheers.